So today we are going to discuss cistuximab. That is actually the anti-cancer drug. In this lecture, we are going to discuss the different aspects of the cistuximab. Okay, so let's start. First of all, cistuximab is basically a monoclonal antibodies that is used in the treatment of the different cancers. Okay, that is the most important thing. So before we start the mechanism of the cytoxymab, we will first of all discuss the erythroplastic oncogene B. Okay. If you see here, we are going to discuss erythroblastic oncogene B. Okay. So, basically these are different proteins, transmembrane proteins that are actually present in the cell membrane, okay. So, erythroblastic oncogene B1, also known as HER1, human epidermal receptor 1, okay. Erythroblastic oncogene B2, also known as HER2. Erythroblastic oncogene B3, also known as HER3. Erythroblastic oncogene B4, also known as HER4. So, here are basically the different categories of the transmembrane proteins. But in this lecture, we will focus on the erythroblastic oncogene B1 or you can say HER1. Or another name for the HER1 is the epidermal growth factor receptor okay that's the most important thing these are basically the different transmembrane proteins that are actually present on the different cells in our body okay so her one or you can say epidermal growth factor receptor so now we will discuss the mechanism of this atoximab okay if you look at the mechanism so basically, this is the cell. If I say tumor cell, okay, and on the tumor cells, we will see the lot of expressions of the epidermal growth factor receptor, or you can say HER1. Okay. So most important thing which you have to remember that they are actually present in dimeric form. These receptors are actually present in dimeric form. Okay. They will become functional only when they dimerized together. Okay. So if you see, here is the epidermal growth factor receptor. Okay. Or you can say her one that are actually expressed on the cells if i say tumor cells okay when the ligand if i say here is the ligand that is the epidermal growth factor bind to this receptor okay epidermal growth factor that is the ligand binds to the epidermal growth factor receptor and after its binding to its receptor, then you will see the dimerization. Both the receptor will dimerize, combine. Okay. That is actually the dimerization of the epidermal growth factor receptor. And after their dimerization, the signal will transduct inside the cell and reach the nucleus and in the nucleus as we know that the presence of the dna okay inside the nucleus we will see the presence of the dna and dna contains lot of genes so actually that signal will activate the genes okay and after the activations of the genes you will see that are actually involved in the cell survival survival and the cell proliferation proliferation 
okay that is the most important thing okay that is most important thing okay so but the question is what actually cetuximab do in this whole process this is actually the normal process that actually happens in the tumor cells okay we just have to stop this signal transduction okay so if you see here if someone take the cetuximab okay here is basically the cetuximab okay now there is a competition between the cetuximab and the epidermal growth factor because they can both bind to the epidermal growth factor receptor okay if the cetuximab bind to the receptor if i say if these binds to the receptor okay when the cetuximab bind to epidermal growth factor receptor then that will stop the signal transduction okay when there is no signal transduction there is no activations of the genes that are actually involved in the cell survival and the proliferation of the cell when there is no proliferation okay the ultimately the cell will go towards the apoptosis and that is our main target so we just want to destroy the tumor cell and after taking cetuximab we have achieved the apoptosis that is the cell death so that's how cetuximab work in the body okay if we look at the clinical uses of the cetuximab okay so cetuximab if someone take the cetuximab with the irino taken or oxaliplatin cetuximab along with the cetuximab Irino taken and oxaliplatin, they are actually used in the metastatic colon cancer. Okay. They are actually used in the metastatic colon cancer. Okay. And next is the, they can also be used in the head and the neck cancer. Okay. But in this case, that will actually taken along with the radiation radiations plus the cetuximab here are basically the different conditions for metastatic colon cancer uh, the combinations drug combination will be irino taken oxaliplatin and the cetuximab and for the head and neck cancer you will see the radiations along with the uh, cetuximab so this is basically the clinical uses of the cetuximab if we look at the different adverse effects after taking the cetuximab so most important you will see the rash on the body that is the most important adverse effects and cetuximab is actually taken through the iv routes okay and next will be the electrolyte wasting electrolyte wasting like sodium potassium okay so monitoring of the electrolyte in the blood that is the most important thing after taking this cetuximab okay and you can also see the diarrhea so in the diarrhea you can see the wasting of the different electrolytes so that is the most important thing so you just have to monitor the electrolytes if the electrolytes deplete then you will see the different complications okay so if we discuss the pre medications you will take the anti histamine to prevent the allergic reactions because after taking cetuximab you will see the different allergic reactions rash so before taking cetuximab the patient will take the antihistamine to prevent the different adverse effect that is actually caused by the cetuximab so this is all about the cetuximab that is actually the monoclonal antibodies used in the treatment of the cancer so this is all about cetuximab if you still have any question you may ask in the comment section thank you so much